Hey everybody, we've done plenty of gear milling with an LS dividing head on a bridge port or an LS dividing head on a more milling machine. But today I'd like to introduce Raleigh Mathis. We've been doing a collaboration with him and he spent time in our shop this winter doing some work with us. And so here's his presentation of uh, milling a gear in HSM Works, a walkthrough. There it is, our milled gear just like that. Okay guys, here we are inside of SolidWorks 2022 with HSM. I already have our gear imported into SolidWorks using Evolvin's DXF generator and then extruded out to our thickness of 3 8 so Like I said before, this is a 20 tooth gear with 14 and a half pressure angle and a DP of 12. However, you guys can do any gear geometry as long as you have the cutter based off these HSM operations. So first off, we're gonna go ahead and create a job. And we're gonna make it cylindrical because gears are cylindrical. And then once that's done, we're gonna make some backside stock offset. We'll throw an inch at it. Now that we have our stock looking correct, we're gonna go ahead and start making our work coordinate system like we want. Now, in milling machines, it's left hand rule. And we want our X pointed into the stock through the center of the gear. So we're gonna go ahead and use Z and X axis. And we're going to select our x-axis going through this face, which we will use our front plane. Now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a new plane in our part as reference. Under reference geometry, plane. Our first reference is going to be this face. And our second reference is going to be our right plane. And since we have 20 teeth, we want our plane angle to be angled from that plane by one tooth offset. And I'll show you why here in a second. And then divide by two. So really it's divided by 40 because we have 20 teeth and 20 gaps inside this. So we want a plane angled 9 degrees from this plane. Click green check, go back into HSM, and now we're going to edit our job. Now the reason for this, if you notice, our axis is pointing straight through our tooth and we don't want that. We want it to point through a gap because that's the material we'll be cutting as a gap instead of a tooth. Now I know at the end of the day this doesn't matter because either way it's gonna space our cutting correctly. However, for simulation purposes, this is nicer. And now we're gonna select our Y axis or Z axis go through this plane. See how that rotated our part or our axis relative to our part? And now we can go ahead 
and select our point. Middle side two, in my case. See how our Z axis is pointed directly through this gap. That's what we want. Now our X is pointing the right way, so we'll go ahead and reverse that. And we're going to have to reselect our middle side. Just like that. So both of our X and our Y is pointed to a gap on the tooth. Now, say you have a non even number gear, like 19. The important one to point to a gap is your Y for simulation purposes because on our first cut, we'll be cutting along the side of the gear this way. So we want our Y to point through our gap. Now, if you need to, you can change your G54 down here. Zero is G54, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that. Click the green check mark, and all looks good. Go ahead and suppress this plane. And now we'll go ahead and make our tool. So we're going to choose a new mill tool. We'll leave our number as one for now. And our cutter. Now if you notice in this list, there is not an option for gear cutter, sadly. So the closest thing we have is a slot mill. Now the geometry of the slot mill is not the same as the gear cutter, but in essence, in essence, they're the same thing. So we're gonna go ahead and measure our gear cutter and enter our geometry. So our flute length or our cutter thickness is 0.314 in our particular case. And our diameter the gear cutter says two and five eighths, however, I don't trust it. So by carefully measuring the diameter of our gear cutter, I get two, six, four, five. Now that is 20 thou big from two and five eighths. So it's always good to go ahead and check your gear cutter geometry. Our corner radius, we'll make that well, like 30 thou, just for simulation purposes. And our shaft diameter is going to be an inch and a half on our arbor. The rest of these I'll leave for now. And feeds and speeds, we can go ahead and Spin this a little bit slower since it is a lot of mass. Go with 3,000 RPMs. And we're gonna do a feed of tooth of 3,000. Number of flutes. Our gear cutter in particular has 12 flutes. and our cutting feed rate is really high. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn our spindle speed down some more. And that looks more proper. So our tool is loaded in, we're gonna hit okay. And now it's time to create our tool path. So thankfully our cutter has all the geometry in it that we need which leaves a very simple tool path to be created. We're gonna select a 2D contour. Go into our library, select our tool that we just created. Go into the geometry tab, select our model box. And this 
gap right here that our y-axis is pointing to, we're going to select that line because that line is our root diameter. Now, if you notice, there's a little arrow right here. Depending on how you click it, the arrow could be on either side. If it happens to be on the inside of the gear, we want to click reverse and make sure that this arrow is on the side that we want to cut. Next, we'll go to our layer height. Now, automatically, our bottom layer is set to where our contour is, and we don't want that. We want it to be half our thickness of our cutter down. So, with our gear cutter having a thickness of 0.314, we'll go ahead and move that down half that distance. Just like that. Now our top height and our feed height and our retract height are all fine. They're way above the gear, so there's no risk of crashing there. Our next tab is our passes tab. We're gonna click roughing passes, and we're gonna make a roughing pass of 30 thou. Really slow, safe number. And we'll start off with doing six passes and set our number of step overs to six. And we're gonna make our finishing pass step over less than at 20 thou. Next, our linking page. We're gonna make our lead out radius smaller so that we don't risk crashing into the A axis at 100 thou lead out and that's all we'll change for that. And that's our first tool path. So, we can go ahead and simulate this and see what it's gonna end up looking like. Slow that down. And that's what our first cut's gonna look like. Now if you notice, this cut looks way bigger than what our gap is. However, that's just because our slitting saw thickness is thicker than the actual geometry of our gear cutter. All right, so we're back in here inside HSM. We're gonna go ahead and watch our stock simulation. Go ahead and play it. And that first cut looks good, so we'll go ahead and pattern it 20 times around the circumference of the gear in order to do 20 more cuts just like it. So we'll go into the pattern folder. Select the contour, go into our pattern folder, go and select our direction around this axis in a circular pattern. And we're gonna go ahead and do this 20 times for 20 teeth. Equal spacing and preserve our order. So now if we stock simulate, we'll be able to see that our gear cutter is gonna come in and cut 20 times around our circumference of our tool. Now granted this simulation doesn't look very good because our tool is simulated as a slitting saw. However, I promise, with the correct gear cutter, it will turn out well. Next, we'll go ahead and click post process. We're going to upload to your machine. Ours is a Haas A-axis. Our output folder will select our USB device. And program name or number needs to be a number. Click post. And once you've posted it, you can name it whatever you want. In our case, it's gonna be 20 tooth. Fourteen point five pressure angle. Twelve DP. Go ahead and save that and go back into the machine. It's gonna pop up our G code. We're gonna view our G code here. Important things to check. 
your tool number, your G54, make sure that's correct, and your spindle speed to make sure that your feeds and speeds are correct. All right, we've got our gear blank in here. Gonna go ahead and probe it. Our work coordinate system is set to the center of the gear on this front face right here. So we'll go ahead and set that with our probe. If you guys need to do it with an edge finder or something, you can do it that way as well. Some important things to check out on your indexer would be that uh, how it works, it's a worm drive here, how repeatable it is, and further into the specs, you'll start seeing things that are, that are really gonna matter to you, like the accuracy, plus or minus 30 arc seconds. Well, what does that mean? That means at a radius of about three inches for a six inch OD part, uh, it's about 1,000 plus or minus on that index. And the backlash on the worm gear is about 40 arc seconds. And we're back to the mill. So now we'll go ahead and touch off our gear cutting tool. And if you remember, I set my layer height inside of HSM to the bottom of the cutter. So we're gonna go ahead and probe at that same position. Just like that, we're done. Now time to upload our program. In this setup, you'll see that there's a tailstock. We're getting it aligned. And in this example that uh, Raleigh's doing, we don't use a tailstock. Uh, short little gear, not too big, so not a big deal. If you get into much bigger, toothier gears, you'll want to use a tailstock for your setup. There it is. Our milled gear, just like that. There we go. A little bit of a burr on that front side. No big deal. Take the deburr whip to that. Looks beautiful. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helped out. If you guys trying to write your own cam inside of HSM, remember, hit that subscribe button if you're not already. Leave a like. Let's us know that we're making videos that you guys like. We'll keep pumping out more content.